go on and look for 44, the lamb, and catch it. It's great when you have young, fit, agile people to do that carry on for you. Iron Tom still thinks he's, he's young and agile. Oh! Go forward and cut her in tighter. Finish with these flaming sheep and I get the dung spreader on. And hopefully the bearing and the dung spreader holds up. That's on its last legs. Smart thing to do probably be actually to fix it before I start putting out the dung as one sitting, but I'll chance there's on that There's always probably. another day. Exactly, you've learned it. There's always another day, don't stress. I was merely illustrating your weaknesses. <sighs> if he wasn't my father, he'd get the back of that hand. We're in an awful situation just right now at the minute. Coronavirus. That is, we know there's no knowing how much damage that that's going to do to the economy. It could be very similar to what the last two world wars were. It could have the same devastating effect. And the one thing that the war's done was it brought uh, people to their senses and realised that farmers were the most important people on the planet. Without the farmer, nobody eat. Everybody starved to death. The farming is running our family, uh, going back generations. Originally started as shepherds, apparently, a long time ago. I wanted 30 to 40 taxels. That was my, my goal. Talk about decisions we regret in life, that is one of them. I told them at the time, don't put wood chip into the tank because it will only block the flaming thing when we go to spread. But oil boys are always right. So I finally have on camera that he done wrong. I don't think we were very popular with the contractor that day, so I don't. If we're going to keep using wood chip for bedding, we're going to have to devise something to stop it making its way into the tank. So uh... A matter of sitting down and actually discussing what you were doing for the day would be helpful. We tend to just give off each other, we're doing the wrong thing. She's getting her tight. If we get it done today, I'll be delighted. So, uh, mm -hmm. all depends on how long Alan decides for the work. But today is just not my day. Came out to the yard this morning to find that Da had reversed into the flaming harvester and caved in the front bit and the rail. Never told me he'd done it. And then when I confronted him about it, apparently it was my fault. So he drove in, done a lot of wrecking and smashing, and I'm the one that's to, to blame for it. Don't know how many times I've told him not to be parking stuff in the yard, especially through early part. I can't get tossed it round to see. And they had the pump and the tractor sat and I was reversed out watching that. Reversed under the harvester on the other side, so I'm sure he's a good crack about that, so he is. The money, investment and time you put on farming on such small, small margins, you're the one taking all the risk. The processors of supermarkets, they have the least risk involved. I've just no time for them big boys playing the games and they've always an excuse, always a story, always holding back, holding back so they can get a bigger share. There is a fortune of it made at beef at the minute, but it's not the farmer that's making it, it's the meat plant, the supermarkets. When my father always preached that the small man had every much as but right to be there as the big man. And if you wanted quality, the place you got the quality was with the small man. So it was. If I had done this 30 years ago, Alan, you wouldn't have had all this experience that you're gaining now, so you wouldn't. If someone hadn't have bought 100 black faced sheep, I wouldn't have needed to have been doing all this fencing. The fences probably would have done for the cattle. I'm not a big fan of gardening, so I'm not. I just threw the herders around her and put the sheep in the lawn. There was a lot of dead wood on the hedges, and whenever we start to cut, we found there was more dead wood. So, it went on every hedge on the farm. Everything was pinned out, anything that was suspicious was removed, piled up, and now we're burning them. Da has his own way of hanging post, and everyone else watching will have their own way. I don't know if we're doing it right or wrong, but the post will be in some shape or other and it'll be half level. 
When you're writing a big check to the contractors, it can sick on your happiness. But then you still have to remember what time diesel and the upkeep of your own machines. And Dad's not keen to do tractor work when I want them to. When I don't want him to do it, he's in tearing and ripping and doing something that he shouldn't be at. As he's getting older, he's getting rasher. The, the roller's probably bouncing up and down, not rolling the ground at all. But You can't really go too slow, because if you're going too slow, well, it gets monotonous and getting boring. Okay, everything just came in at once, because it was the spring was late. Even though it's a great spell now, just has batched everything into one mess. But we are getting there. In theory, things are actually going in my favour for once at the minute. And we're getting on well. It's never nice to lose any animal, so it's not... Something you have to get hard and tell and just put up with it, you do. In all honesty, I just feel like going into the house and going to bed. I know that doesn't solve anything, it's not. The rest of the fields need tedded for hay, the rest of the cows need fed, need the chef sheep boy coming to spray. I feel later on, oh, there's a mountain of stuff needing done, and right now I can see it all far enough. Like, what is the point of working for nothing? For the amount of work you put on the farm, and you're working quite a bit of time for nothing all the time anyway. Farming's an addiction, so a couple of days and you'll be all something else you'll be thinking about doing. I've just accepted this year nothing's going to go the right way. Not that they're going the wrong way, it's just that things aren't going to be done to perfection. Yes, the log of my silage cut early, the cows maybe aren't out yet, they should have been dosed a bit sooner. There's a mountain of things just not done the way I'd like them done, but it's hopefully a one year only thing. If you'd have bailed that when I told you, Tal, it was May hay. You didn't, you waited until today, now it's June hay, so it'll depreciate it in value, so it has. And just for the fact that he wants to keep the hay for the sheep, the wee badness in me just thinks I could sell the whole lot for all the 23 bales of his own, or 26, whatever it is. I just look at myself in the mirror every morning and just think I'm a complete joke the way I operate, but I think I'm winning. Slowly, slowly I think I'm winning. 1600 maybe I spent this year between new blades, a couple of waffle plates, new sharpening stone. I'm sure she's roaring, roaring around the field the very best. And this silo cover that I've got, it in theory is meant to be easy closed and easy open, so like you don't have to worry about all. Oh, I need to keep enough ground or grass for the pit. I'm reserving my judgment on it. I'll tell you more if you come back this time next year. I'll tell you. I'm 75 years of age. I've been farming 60 years on my own, and I have never ever only they that once covered a pit that there was absolutely no waste. The grass should have been in two or three weeks ago. John tried to convince me to cut last Saturday, and I should have cut and it would have worked out well, but luckily the clouds just came round us at different points, but it's never hit us. For young ones now, I've just given them the same, I'm the same advice today as I was giving them when I was a young man myself. Unless you really love it, don't you go into farming, because there's no way you'll ever make money out of farming unless you love what you're doing.